G'day my friends and welcome to Marty's Garden on YouTube. I've got a really cool live for you show today. And if you're watching the rerun, hang through because there's some gold in this, guys. We're talking about the long forgotten dwarf tomato and mostly these types of cherry tomatoes that grow really awesome in pots and containers. We're going to cover it a lot. We've got some like video stuff that we're going to trial here on YouTube, see if that plays through. And I've got some pages to pull up and some different images and things. I'm really going to break it down. The thing about this type of tomato plant, it's quick growing, it's very prolific, and less chance of pests and disease, and you can grow it in a small space, in a small container, so it's very cost effective, and that's what we're looking at today. We're bringing back things from the past into the future, and stuff that was once popular or was never really well known about, here this channel to help you grow more food. Now, what I've got here is a video starting off from uh, a lovely lady in YouTube. I'm not sure what the channel is, I'm very sorry. Uh, I just found it just recently, but there are lots of content uh, about dwarf tomatoes in YouTube that you'll be able to do your research for. I found that's the best, best place to do. So hopefully uh, that all plays well. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this down here to the side here, and we're gonna have a shot at playing this video, well, part, some parts of it. And if some ads pop up, I might have to stop it or something like that, but we've got plenty of stuff to show you. So hang in there, let's do it. And uh, this is this is really cool. So the first part, we're talking about the plants and can, the plants. Let's go. Let me know if there's no sound, okay? Dwarf tomatoes is that some of them, depending on the variety, can be grown in teeny tiny pots as small as a four inch in some cases. Be sure to check the recommendations for the individual variety or varieties that you choose to grow, but most of the varieties I'm growing tend to do best in about a six to an eight inch pot. But more important even than pot size is drainage. Make sure that whatever pots you choose, they have plenty of drainage holes on the bottom. Now for some of my container grown plants, I honestly don't give potting medium a whole lot of thought. I just kind of throw them in whatever I have on hand. But since these tomatoes are producing a relatively large amount of fruit in this compact little space, I really like to opt for a high quality potting mix when growing these. Today I'm using Glee potting mix. And if you caught my video on growing cabbages in containers, you've heard me talk about Glee before. Glee utilizes hydrofiber, a sustainable growing medium made from thermal thermally refined pine bark, which is used by professional growers. It has a couple of advantages over typical potting medium in that it regulates water and disperses Okay, we've got sound now. All right, so thank you for that. So yeah, these dwarf tomatoes, really cool. Uh, the reason why I got this picture here pulled up is I wanna show you just how small these pots are, right? And they are absolutely brilliant for what you can grow. And so hopefully the, uh, the video sound went through uh, okay. And uh, it was probably just a little bit soft, but it was a good little trial for us. And uh, we're back with the sound now. My daughter, the sound engineer, she must have bailed out early. 
<laughs> and she probably like, yeah, he can hear me. Uh, anyway, we're 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 in we're in the process of working on that behind the scenes now. But yeah, these are really really cool and really really cute. And I believe that um, you can grow them in all type. Well, I don't believe I know you can because I've done it. And what I want to show you is something here that I've got myself. This is a big plastic container. So let's just pull me up for a moment until we keep playing this video until we pull up onto any ads. So I've been doing some videos on container gardening and uh, you might want to check out the live shows and the videos on those. And this is, uh, what? how many litres? Five litres, so I don't know what that is in gallons. Maybe someone can let us know uh, in the comments box, but that is a good size for growing an indeterminate tomato. Might even be a bit big for a dwarf. You could get them in a smaller one than that, but an indeterminate tomato is generally a compact tomato that produces fruit quite quickly within about four to six weeks and then you need to plant succession so you have like three going at one time so when one's going to flower you're planting another one you get the next one ready and they're really good at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season of your grow season and whatever time it is now another thing with this bottle that I'll show you here uh, is that you can actually do something similar to my other one that I've been teaching is you can cut so you can fill it with the soil, soil like that, and you can use this top part as a hot house. So if you're in a cooler area, uh, you wanna get them started, get them pumping much quicker in the winter time, uh, in the spring earlier, and get them started earlier, then you can start them in something like this. And these are just throwaway bottles, right? Food grade water bottle. And you can also do another system where you can fill it up with soil about yay high, you cut a big window, right? Right round, halfway around, so you leave half the back there and the top on and it just pours out the side like that and tumbles over out the side like that. And then eventually, if it's, it's the weather's starting getting even hotter, then you can just t cut the lid off and uh, keep the top for maybe a watering bottle or something like that, fill it up with water, put a few holes in it and you know do all different types of things. Or you could probably cut the lid off that and turn it upside down into another little pot or something. So yeah, try not to waste anything, but some good ideas um, for what you can do for growing dwarf tomatoes uh, in that. So we'll see how we go with the sound. You might have to turn it up again a little bit uh, for this and then I'll remember to put the microphone straight back on. I've got to turn the microphone off when I'm doing the video because uh, it reverbs through. So let's go. That Glee offers proper drainage but doesn't dry out too quickly. Many of the potting mixes I've used in the past dry out ridiculously fast. The trouble is I'm not great at remembering to water. I have killed more plants than I would like to admit by forgetting to water them. So Glee offers me a bit of forgiveness in the watering department. The flavor, texture, and overall quality of tomatoes is greatly affected by the nutrient and mineral content of the growing medium or soil that they're grown in. And I've found that feeding my tomatoes with a natural fertilizer containing not just NPK, but also micronutrients such as calcium, magnesium, boron, and zinc are important as well. I opt for Gurney's tomato food, which has a 4-4-3 ratio, as well as containing those important micronutrients. One thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to go too high on the nitrogen because you'll end up with big, lush, beautiful plants at the expense of fruit production. Another note on fertilizer, you'll probably notice that a lot of potting mixes have fertilizer mixed right in. I prefer using a potting mix that has little to no fertilizer because I like to customize with my own options. Glee does have some slow release fertilizer mixed in, but it's such a small amount that I find I can easily mix in my own without overdoing it on the nitrogen. And of course we need our tomato seedlings. I prefer to start from seed under grow lights and transplant the seedlings into the larger containers I will grow them in. You could, in theory, start the tomatoes right in the pots you plan to grow them in, but I like the ability to tweak the potting medium and the fertilizer as my tomatoes grow. I prefer to start all of my tomatoes in a mix specific for seed starting, and I don't begin feeding until they have their first set of true leaves and are an inch or two tall. 
I mix the food into their water each time I water my seedlings. I started the seedlings of each of the seven varieties I will be trialing about a month and a half ago. Tomatoes, even microdwarfs, are quite vigorous and will reach transplantable size quite quickly. It's best to transplant these well before they start setting any blossoms. You can see on a few of these I'm already running behind. Usually any time after the seedlings are three to four weeks old is a good time to transplant. Now some optional supplies if you're growing your tomatoes indoors. First of okay, all, let's like, just let's just stop on let's just stop on there. Hopefully I didn't get too much reverb on that. Um, yeah, some interesting stuff uh, going through there. You might have to turn my sound. I think my sound's louder. And what I'm getting on the, the YouTube video here is uh, a bit softer. So uh, that's a bit hard for me to run on the back end. So I'm hoping that that uh, isn't too bad. I'll check it out when I uh, do the replay. Now she's going to get into some lights and different things like that. And uh, I don't want to actually cover that section for indoor growing. So, we'll, you know, she's got a um, how-to spot for, for the potting. Um, so we're going to go up to that uh, next. And then later on, we're going to look. Later on, then we're going to look at uh, a web page and have a look at some images and things, and we can have a chat about it. And it should be coming in uh, nice and clear. So thanks everyone there for letting me know we got sound and things like that. Like I said, my daughter, she's just thought, oh, she can hear me at the beginning. That's how I what I asked her to do. So we've got to just do some little bit of work with our sound engineer in the background there, and uh, and keep moving forward. So yeah, we'll have a look at this now. And uh, let me know if you're enjoying, uh, yeah, me replying this, replying this, and I'll let you know what that channel is towards the end because she's got other videos about growing dwarf tomatoes and tomatoes in containers and things, and she seems pretty good at what she does. Okay, let's keep rolling. Two thirds full with potting medium. With glee, I make sure to fluff the stuff before adding it to my pots, as it expands to two and a half times its compressed size. This 0.4 cubic foot bag expands to fill 25 quarts, the same as a standard bag of potting soil. The easiest way I've found to do this is just to dump the whole bag in a large container. It's much easier to fluff and I can fill my pots over the tote and contain my mess. Next, I add my fertilizer. You'll wanna follow the instructions for whichever specific fertilizer you choose, but with Gurney's tomato food, I add two tablespoons at planting time. The instructions actually say to also add two tablespoons when the tomatoes start setting fruit. But I find that with plants this size, two tablespoons at transplant plus the small amount of fertilizer that Glee does contain is sufficient. Now it's transplant time. I gently break up the root ball of my seedlings and place so that the top of the root ball will be just under the soil surface. And then I fill my container the rest of the way up with Glee potting medium. Then I water thoroughly. At this stage, I really saturate the soil. I give it 10 minutes or so to drain and settle. And then if needed, I top off the containers with more potting mix. Now I place under my grow lights. This particular light has adjustable intensity. So I generally keep it a bit lower until the plants start setting fruit, at which point I increase the intensity. This again will vary depending on what type of light you're using. So follow the manufacturer's instructions for growing fruiting plants. You can, of course, grow these outdoors or in a greenhouse as well. But there are a few specifics to keep in mind. For best flavor and yield, pick a spot where your tomatoes are going to get full sun. Full sun helps the development of sugars, which will help give your tomatoes that optimal flavor profile at maturity. Keep in mind that microdwarfs that have been bred specifically for indoor growing often do not have the disease resistances bred into them that garden tomatoes do. If you live in an area with heavy disease pressure, take precautions to protect your plants. This may be as simple as keeping them far away from your garden tomatoes, which may spread disease, using a preventative spray program, such as a copper spray to prevent fungal diseases, or as I mentioned, growing them in a protected outdoor greenhouse. 
But one benefit to growing them outdoors is that your friendly garden pollinators will most likely take care of the pollination requirements for you. If you're growing indoors or in a greenhouse where there's no insect activity, you're going to need to hand pollinate. This can be achieved by keeping a strong fan on your plants to disperse pollen, vigorously shaking the stems when pollen drop is happening, or hand pollinating with a small soft paintbrush. This last method is what I prefer because it ensures that I'm getting every single flower on my little tomato plants pollinated, therefore getting the heaviest fruit set on my plants. Now, in general, I've been told that these types tend to do better in pots or containers than they do in ground, but I personally have not tried growing them in ground. And of course, supplying your plants with a proper amount of water is extremely important. I aim for watering more deeply and less often. And with Glee specifically, as I mentioned, I won't need to water these as much as plants potted in standard potting mix. I wait till the top inch, inch and a half of the soil is dry until watering again. Remember with Glee, this root zone area will stay damp much longer than the top of the soil surface. So be careful. All right. So there you go. I will just get, we'll remove her for a moment. Uh, just down to there and bring me across. So, you know, she says Glee this, Glee that. I don't know if she said the beginning of the video sponsored by Glee or whatever, but really you just need to use a good, uh, quality mix. Uh, I like that she said that you, she buys a potting mix or a, a you know a compost, which I, we recommend here, uh, without already fertilizers in it and then making your own. Now there's lots of different brands that you can get, but yeah, if you can get an NPK that has all those other minerals like she suggested, such as the boron and things like that, that just really does help with the extra growth. But remember, you can do that also by uh, just getting a really good high quality seaweed mix, uh, liquid fertilizer. And, and that'll work from there. So we're gonna pull up uh, in a little while. We'll just get her, her channel for you guys before we, before we split. Uh, I'll put it up there and it should follow through. If I click onto YouTube, it should give me her channel. We'll close down any of the ads. Um, sorry about that. Uh, here it is here, this should pull up. Now she's getting a free plug here. This is pretty good for her. Just hang on a second. Whoa. She isn't showing up. One sec. So it's Grow Fully with Jenna. Grow Fully with Jenna. And uh, I just got to change the sharing of the screen here. Stop sharing the screen and we can go here to grow fully with Jenna and we'll have a quick look just to show you her channel there. So there it is. Uh, that's where she come from. And uh, yeah, basically what I'm doing is I'm just creating, curating what they call curating content from there. So if you like her and maybe you want to go across and subscribe and have a look at some of her other content that she has. I noticed she did mention some things about spraying and stuff like that. That's not something that I push here on my channel uh, I believe in plant health and if the plants aren't doing too healthy and like that you've got too many of them growing or whatever you have got to look at it, the problems and solutions and solve it as best you can without going into spray so um, there we go grow fully <laughs> grow, full, grow fully with Jenna and um, as far as I know she's got some other really good tomato and dwarf tomato compact potted tomato videos on uh, her channel. All right, let's keep going back to me here and we will pull this up side by side, get it across and we'll get um, another page across for you guys to look at. It's got to stop sharing that screen and we'll get the other website up right now. So as I'm rolling through, we will get that how to grow dwarf tomato plants is the name of the page here. We'll share that. That should come up nice and good. Thank you for your patience there. Uh, no, she's still there. <laughs> this is sometimes we do have uh, we do have light glitches, but we'll get it. We will get it right. Let's go share screen. Uh, didn't come up with the share. Tumblr tomatoes trialing variety. That's it. You beauty. There we go. We've got it. You can see. Um, the first image there down below, we'll just scroll down a bit and bring it up.
and we'll bring it up there and you can see now this is called a tumbling tom red now it is a determinant type of tomato uh, it's not a dwarf it's not a dwarf tomato right but uh, they grow quite quite prolific and you can grow them in uh, like a, a decent sized pot which would say like a five litre something like along those lines no problem and they just tumble over the side and they don't grow big out and trail out everywhere like an indeterminate will so indeterminate will keep on growing like a long vine vine the determinate ones are more bushy and this one they like to call them different marketing names and things but generally we look at the latins but this one yeah it's a tumbler so there's if you type in uh, cherry tomato tumbler, you'll come up with all these different beautiful colours and things that will grow in pots. And you plant them with uh, you plant them with uh, chip basil, basil and parsley, uh, the sort of the two companions. So we'll scroll down here and keep looking at this. I want to show you some more images. Here's a yellow one, which is really cool. And um, I'm growing a indeterminate yellow one similar to this at the moment so it vines out but you can sort of cut them back and they'll go short and stocky and indeterminate as well if you keep pruning them really heavy and a lot of little branches come out so you can do something similar but they will grow a bigger root system and they'll only grow as big to fill the pot so that's another way you can do it you create your own determinant style one and uh yeah so that's another popular popular variety they call it uh mascota Garden Pearl, Rambling Golden Stripe, Cherry Fountain, Tom Jr. So they've got many different names, Cherry Cascade. Anyway, we'll keep rolling down, keep scrolling down here. And then we'll look at this one here. So they talk about trailing habit, which is more, some of them are like half indeterminate, half determinate. They bred them together and they'll trail for a little while. So they'll create a long, long stem, then I'll just shoot out and uh, finish up much more quickly but the one we're looking at here and i really like this this is more like what we're talking about the compact dwarf one i'll see what that looks like when we pull that up side by side it still shows yes yeah, so you can see it's just growing in one of those containers hanging up now uh i know you deb you're watching this show um you basically have got some hanging space and you've got a, a beans i believe in a hanging pot something similar to this and you can do the same thing so you put you're using your vertical space you're hanging it up and they're tumbling down so you're not using the vine ones remember we're going for the determinant tomatoes and they always just market them as potted tomatoes these ones grow good in pots if you pull the label out usually they'll have indeterminate or determinant okay let's move through for with some questions now guys if you've got anything that you'd like to add uh, I really just try to inspire you to um, find other ways to grow plants, look at maybe using uh, recycled containers to do it to save money, and you can, man, you can get a lot of food out of these, and I think there's about three or four plants in that one container there, but I, I would put no more than two, I think four is overkill, they'd be sort of fighting for rooting space, um, and I think two is enough and you would end up getting the same amount of fruit and you could put the other two plants somewhere else, you know, and get more space out of it. So, and that, that type of pot will dry out quite quickly. So just keep an eye on that. And remember, as the lady said, some potting mixes do. But if you've got compost, uh, they won't dry out um, as fast. Okay, let's pull some comments across here. I love growing micro dwarf tomatoes indoors when it's too cold to grow tomatoes outdoors. Yeah, that's another one of the benefits. If you've got a good window spot, gets around about six hours sunlight, um, you can just put them uh, on your window. And I might even try that myself if hopefully we've got enough uh, to do that. So if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to send them across and um, I'll, I'll put them across. And if you've got a question, put a big Q next to it and that's easier for me to, uh, to do. And so we've got one of our, <laughs> yeah, I love Chip, Chibico, Jocalis, Pinocchio, Cherry Falls and Orange Hat. Well, thank you so much, Jen, Jeannie. Uh, I've got your name right, if I haven't, forgive me. And they're the different names of the common ones there. So there's a great one, you might wanna write them down and uh and, and and get some good information there or maybe Jeannie might you want to keep sending across some stuff if, you, if you're growing them that is just wonderful i've got a few uh determinants that i'm growing indigo rose is a uh determinant 
that I'm growing and it's sort of one of those ones that vines out a bit and then does that thing so it only gets about oh two to three feet high um, and then you can take cuttings off it and it'll, you'll get half a dozen fruits and then it will grow because it's finished because it's determinate. So yeah, please put a queue uh, before that and the love hanging pots. So I think you should need to go with that. I think it's a bit something that will work really well at your place, Deb. Um, please add queue before your question. Yes, yes. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, no question is regarded as stupid here on my channel. We're all about inspiring new gardeners, old gardeners coming in here and sharing their knowledge and worm farmers and different things, uh, all getting involved in creating this space, this community space here. And we've been running a live show now for I think nearly 10 days or something like that, every day, uh, which has just been awesome. I just started dehydrating tomatoes and love to eat them. Now I'll try it with cherry tomatoes. I think, look, I've dehydrated both and I think the cherry tomato is a bit easier because you've just got less volume, they're easier to cut, things like that. And there is another one called the Tiny Tim. Uh, they come in two different varieties, so the common name, you can get a, a compact one and that's really super prolific and you can also get a, uh, an indeterminate that um, grows out like a vine and they have a tiny little fruit, lots of seed, but you just squash them, get the seed out and you can use the inside meat part and the skins uh, for cooking and making sauces and things. So um, yeah, don't be afraid to uh, push out any questions there. We'll keep scrolling down this page and we'll have a look at another tumbling variety. This is the Lozano F1 in 2018 season. It's UK bred, ideal for baskets containers and seedlings see and, and <laughs> missed that bit oh seeds from suttons okay so it's a tumbler cherry tomato and yeah like it says here on the thing most of them are really sweet sorry about the image is so small um to be honest there isn't a lot of great content about dwarf cherry tomatoes that is there but i'd probably have to really search very hard there's not enough, as far as I'm concerned, on YouTube would be the best place to get your information. And they do sell them. You can buy them in pots at nurseries and all that type of stuff, but they're always promoted as a container uh, container tomato most of the time. And if you're hunting down, if you want to do this as a hobby, really cool hobby to do uh, these type of dwarf tomatoes if you've got a small space. Okay, let's keep looking at what we've got here. I think that's the end of it. Yep, that's the end of it there. We'll finish up on that page and we'll move across to another page in a minute. Uh, we'll actually head across there now. Hopefully everything's working well with this. Let's get rid of that and we'll go across to the next page now. Wonderful, I love this. I love this software being able to do this. Uh, just pull up these different pages and share things. It was really interesting that that video worked uh, well. I got the hands up, the thumbs up from Deb saying that the sound was coming through, which is great because uh, my sound engineer bailed out on me. <laughs> um, and I'll just remove that and that should be all good. Now, this is the image that uh, really impressed me when I was first looking through. And this is on a website called happysprout.com. Ha happysprout.com. And if you see the image there, I'm going to pull it up side by side with me. Should work out quite good. Look at those little tiny pots. They're just like they're only like that big. I don't know what the vol, how many. She said in the video what the literage was uh, for them, but I think you know, like we're looking at around about maybe five liters or less uh, for these little containers. And each plant, because uh, they're bred differently, some of them will grow small, some of them will grow big. But these dwarf ones are the same before, and, and, and our friend here online said that, yeah, put them in the windowsill. And you can then come along and just harvest your little cherry tomatoes, have a little basil plant next to it, little parsley, and a flat leaf parsley, I, I prefer myself. And you've got a little tiny salad to go with, or you can get them and, make, and crush it up in a mortar and pestle, make a little sauce straight away, put it on a bit of pasta or something like that. So you can make things really quickly uh, like that. So let's keep moving here uh, into the questions. And we've got Tasmanian chocolate is a dwarf. The first time my husband tried a slice, he asked what kind of sauce I used on it because it was so juicy and sweet. Awesome stuff. The Tas 
Tasmanian chocolate. Never even heard of that. And as I was saying, there's heaps of different ones. There's some really cool breeders out there and doing some amazing stuff with these ones. And it must be a black cherry tomato, is it? Uh, really cool. The stuff that I learn here coming in uh, into the live is just absolutely brilliant. It just is it's priceless. It's just gold. <laughs> All right. Michael, cherry tomatoes are great dehydrated. Well, there you go. I totally agree. Um, they sweeten up even more um, in a way. They've got almost, oh, you've got to try them, right? You can buy them in the shop, but why do that when you can make your own? Does the fruit on a determinant grow more quickly than an indeterminate? Uh, depends. Depends on your growing season, how you're growing it, and things like that. But overall, generally, yes, to, uh, if you're going to compare all the different varieties. I've had them, you know, uh, and pop up fruit in three weeks. But generally, is there's like a four-week to a six-week uh, thing there. And I'm sure Jenny would um, be able to give us more of an average. Then it's like she's growing a lot more of them and had a lot more experience with them than me. I've grown them over the years, and as I said, I've had them in three weeks. Uh, that was the optimum condition, best condition, type of variety and things. But generally, we look at the sort of that six-week period. And then some of them can finish really quickly. Then others can go on for like fruit up for about a month even up to six weeks, just depending on these varieties. As I said, sometimes they cross the indeterminates with the determinants and things like that. So, uh, yeah, let's keep moving with more questions. Where do you get all your varieties of tomatoes from, Marty? I actually get most of my seed off eBay, and I look uh, that make sure, like I check the, the seller out really well, make sure, you know, I'll check their reviews, things like that, if they've been selling for a very long time. If they've only sold a few things, they're only very new, I'm a bit cautious. Um, I'll also hunt down different nurseries. Um, I'll go out the front of Mitre Tan, I'll go into Bunnings, um, I'll go wherever I can to find what I need. And this year, because of La Nina, a lot of, we didn't get a lot of really good variety of tomatoes come out. So I went for the more UK varieties that um, grow really well in a cooler season, such as the Indigo and the um, the other one, which is like a stripe. I just can't think of uh, the name right at the moment, but it's like a striped sort of green one. It goes red eventually. And uh, so you can just look it up, uh, UK varieties or cool climate ones, depending on your climate, right? Like... Uh, in here, I can grow the Thai pinks now. Uh, I've got some seed for them. I think, I'm pretty sure they're a determinant as well. And um, I just got to find the time to plant them. And so, because it's hot enough for it to plant a tropical one soon. So I'll go the UK varieties in the winter and into the spring and late. And then uh, in, in right in the hottest peak now that we've got now, I'll even try and plant some tropicals. But I generally go for, don't go for the big beef steaks and things like that because I find the birds or something get them before I do. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's keep moving through. So I like cherry tomatoes because you can just harvest quickly, get a lot of them. They just keep turning over. They get have better pro less problems with pests and things. Yes, Tomanian chocolates are brown. They are quite bigger than cherry tomatoes. Oh, awesome, awesome. Um, that's really nice to know. I've got a brown tomato growing out there, but I don't know what the name of it is. I've lost the label. Uh, Danny, do you cut them in half? Uh, look, this is gold here. She's uh, really, you're really helping us out a lot here. It's nice that someone's seen that uh, come up into their YouTube feed, this live feed. And they, they're into growing them and stuff because I'm growing it, but I don't have uh, all the videos and I'm not growing the real small dwarf ones, which we're sort of bringing back here. Like why, why are these, uh, you know, forgotten, you know, these legend little plants and what are the benefits of them? And if you're coming in later, uh, such as uh, you've missed the beginning of the show, we're talking about dwarf cherry tomatoes and why they've sort of been long forgotten and they're an amazing little plant. You can grow them in something like this or an indeterminate tomato. That's a five litre container garden. I've been doing a lot on container gardening lately, vertical ones and things like that. Looking at this this one, which we, we talked about last night, little vertical garden with a watering can at the top and a little catching the water at the bottom. Plants grow out the side. So if you missed that, uh, that was one of the last videos. You'll see that in the live tab or on my channel. This one, we can cut out the side, a big window right around like that. 
put the soil in that spill out. Obviously, we've got to put drainage holes in the bottom. I'm going to buy one of those heat guns things and go through that way, like that. Or you can lay it on its side, put the holes in the bottom and cut it out like that. But I like in the cooler climate, when it's, when it's cool and like in winter or you want to start them early in spring, it's still cold, having this lid that you can close over and close that over on the side as well, create your own little mini greenhouse. And then you're not pulling it out of this little mini greenhouse and replanting it somewhere else, you're just growing it. Just remember tomatoes don't like too much humidity, so you've got to be a little bit careful with that. But man, what a great way to recycle and grow food at home uh, really, really cheaply. And like I said, you can buy seed on eBay if you just do your research uh, for like three bucks uh, sent to you, even a dollar sometimes sent to you in the mail for free, which is just absolutely crazy. Here we go. Yes, Michael, I do cut cherries in half. And I, I do too, yeah, I do. Uh, sometimes the bigger ones, I'll cut them into thirds. I should have I ate some this morning, the little Romas, little Roma cherries. And I when I was putting on the toast, I thought I ate them and I got, oh, oh, should have saved them for the video. And I thought, mm, taste good, don't I? <laughs> Just ate them. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I've got some little cherry Romas growing as well. And I don't know if they're determinants or indeterminates. They seem to grow to about, I've got them at about two and a half feet at the moment. And it's just scrambling through. Um, my bale gardens sort of sitting on different stuff and not staking. I haven't got them staked up. When I had my first seedling sale, everyone wanted my produce, my, wanted my producing micro dwarf tomato plants. I wasn't selling them at the time, but everyone thought they were so cute. Oh, what? So you're selling them now? Uh, if you are, mate, feel free to jump in here and take a plug in here. Um, always happy to help out. Uh, people with their little businesses and things like that. I'm all about on this channel growing people as well as growing plants, right? So yeah, feel free to do that. You've been adding some good value to the channel and I haven't come in and just spammed us straight off the... Look, be interesting to know because um, let's have a look at this. What's that? Tomatoes are disgusting. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, there's someone that doesn't like them. Bring on the debate, I say. Oh, I, I disagree. But uh, yeah, some people just just don't like them. It's not for them. Fair enough. I get it. Uh, my daughter doesn't like wa watermelon, you know. So there you go. Anyway, um, let's go back to this one. The seedling sale, Genie Scarba. But listen, if you're enjoying the show and you're coming in, we've got 22 people watching at the moment. What we do is we play a game here. We try and keep the thumbs up levels above the numbers of people watching. I don't get a, um, a concept of how many thumbs up we've got on the video so far. So please let me know in the comments box and we'll try to get it above uh, 22 thumbs up. I like to play that game and uh, again, keep it rolling. So yeah, awesome stuff. We'll go back to Jeannie here. I sell seedlings locally, it supports my garden habit. Oh, cool, that's really good, that's really good. Uh, stoked for you. I guess if someone's around you locally, then it's a bit hard to sort of sell it on YouTube like this because you need a little shop or something like, not that online, but all the best to you, Jeannie. Thank you very much. And uh, we got a laugh out lull from Deb, maybe from Kieran's, Kieran's boy, I don't like tomatoes. Ah, just really great. So like I said, give us a thumbs up if you haven't already and we'll keep on rolling down to the next image in here. Now this is from happysprout.com. If you want to go over and check it out, how to, how to grow tomatoes in pots and look at these cute little things, right? Like even if you don't like eating them, how could you not say that they are not super cute, right? And um, I'm not into that whole cutesy factor thing. I'm a bit of a bloke's bloke. But, you know, I look at them and go, that's pretty, they're pretty groovy, you know? And look how tiny they are. <laughs> it's just like these little things, you know, like this big and yeah, and these ones uh, obviously would only just get it started. So I, I like the concept of when you're growing these is to just start them in the pot, start the seedling in the, the seed in the pot, less transplants, the better, because we want to get them sort of fruiting and, and going well. And then, you know, you add the fruiting fertilizer, so the B1 more towards the end. You're getting a bit of nitrogen going at first. As soon as you see a little flower, pulling back on the nitrogen and feeding them uh, the PK and other minerals and things like that. So there's lots of good ones around and um, you can find in uh, Bunnings, 
there's a brand where you can actually buy it's like a an all-in-one NPK uh, organic one or you can use uh, different sort of liquid ones or I we talk we teach worm tea here uh, for the, the beginning growths and if you're really good at worm farming you would get uh, all the different minerals and things through it and stuff like that so uh, that's the probably the cheaper option to do is by having your own worm farms and hitting them with a the juice and then backing off on the worm juice uh, when the flowers appear if it's growing in good compost it'll grow enough anyway and then you can find another pk for um for the flower set all right let's keep moving through here for people who don't like tomatoes you haven't tasted the right kind some are sweet, others are fruity, some are more earthy. My granddaughter said one tasted like summer. Yeah, that's very true because like I've got, I think I've got about six varieties growing here and my daughter just goes for the brown chocolate ones or the, the ones that are sort of tiger stripe ones, tigerella, that's why could I forget that name, the tigerellas. And uh, they've got a bit more of a sour flavour. The yellow ones are super sweet. She doesn't like those, she won't go anywhere near them. So uh, yeah, yeah, they all are a little bit different and there's nothing like um, tomatoes like out of the shop, they just blah. They sort of fill really. It is typical they grow like weeds at mine, cherry tomatoes. <laughs> Marty tom tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, they are. Like I've got those little tiny tims at the front and they must have been just there from the people before and I saw them coming up. I didn't know what type they were. I had a fair idea they were the tiny tims. And so I've just let them sort of bush all around the place and I do a little bit of pruning, not much, and uh, go and we collected about 100 the other day and put them in like a sambal stir fry, the Balinese fried rice and uh, man, just the bomb, just squash them and get the seed out of it. And uh, yeah, pretty good flavour over, overall for, they're a little bit sour, which is better for the cooking um, sort of thing. But uh, Karen will eat them straight off the rack, that one uh, as well. G'day Rick, good to see you here. Um, and we've got, yep, micro dwarf tomatoes like growing hand plant, house plants to give you food. Yeah, so, like I said, like, cuteness overload. I'm a blokey bloke. I'm not into that whole cutie thing, but I don't know. They've got me, that's for sure. Let's keep looking down at some more images here. We'll keep scrolling down to the next one, because this is something I really wanted to show you for you guys that want to use more of your vertical space, right? You've got the you've got like a veranda coming through an example. So we're looking we've been looking at the container gardening for using saving money and using your vertical space and putting that up against some type of pole or a wire or things like that, connecting them together. We're looking at these how you can use them as mini greenhouses, plant them that way, plant them that way, cut holes so they can grow out wherever you want. And then also we're looking at buckets now. So this is really interesting and I'm sure this was a bit of a trend a few years back and so I'm pretty sure that um, some of you that have been gardening for quite some time have seen this. I had a go at it. Uh, I, I don't know if I really tried hard enough to be honest but um, I, I, think they're, I think they're pretty good value to do them like this and you grow the, uh, you're better off growing the indeterminate varieties the determinate varieties from my opinion but i could be wrong here i'm sure people have grown these very well with the vining ones but the vining ones will have to grow long and then pull back up and we'll show you a bit more in uh, talk about in this image here so as you can see here it's gone down it's gone down it's gone down i think he's got a hook coming out from the fence there and then he's pulled the trailer up so one central leader all the way down the fruit here fruit here fruit here and then fruit there and then fruit there and popping out there and you might have to trail them off again some way like that now to me uh it's a bit pointless i don't know why you would bother if you're gonna go and this you're not gonna go the bushy ones out of the bottom just grow them out. I, I could be wrong here. Someone might want to debate and argue with me about this. But, you know, why not just have the lid open and let them spill over the side like that and just fall down like that? It just seems like a bit overkill unless you can hang them right up because you've still got to pour water in from the top. So, you know, maybe someone would like to sort of bring that forward. I'm always happy to sort of debate these little things without getting too narky in here. It's all about fun and education. But, yeah. What do you guys think? You know, like, is that a bit of a waste, like, growing out of the bottom like that? Is there an advantage to it? 
or should we have one coming out of the bottom and another one coming out of the top and another plant coming out of the side? I just see a lot of wasted space and energy in that image. Even though it's working, maybe they improved it uh, over time. So love to hear what you guys think about that. Let's pull across uh, another comment here. Hopefully I haven't missed up missed anything, guys. If I have, please forgive me. If you've got a question, cue in the front, please. Did you know too much nitrogen can make your tomatoes textures go mushy? Too much water when you're harvesting makes them taste more blab. Yes, yes, that's a great point, Jenny. Um, for sure, I, I've noticed both of those things uh, in my growing experiences. And when I get a lot of rain, um, they split open and, 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 and even if they haven't split, they're swollen a bit, they are a bit more mushy, yeah. So, uh, but I'm still happy to eat them rather than the shop ones. <laughs> G'day, LP. Nice to see you here, mate. And, uh, yeah. Oh, so Jenny agrees with me. Not impressed with upside down growing. Tried it. Produces less. It's more gimmicky. Oh, there you go. Someone agrees with me. I was waiting for a heated debate in there, but, hey, I, I think I'm pretty much on the money here. All right, let's keep moving through. Mark from Self-Sufficient Me, a way of growing tomatoes is cool, but upside down is cool. <laughs> I grow that. So sometimes it's just a bit of fun to do something like that. You know what I mean? Like It's just like an experiment and, and those type of things, and it's just entertainment uh, more than the same being productive. But uh, most people are saying it's a bit weird, and I tend to agree. I think uh, if I was going to do it, I'd have one growing out of the top, I'd have a lot of, like, I'd have determinant ones, uh, indeterminates in there, so they just bushy and just don't hang down too far, not trailing, and then I would cut other holes and have a, maybe a basil or something growing outside. Like, why not use all that space um, there? But anyway, it's good to hear what you guys think, and uh, thank you for sharing uh, in the feed in there. Now, this one, uh, this, you know, this it's all sort of like similar content right through all these sites about growing tomatoes. And we'll just go back to this one here and we will pull, get that rid of that across now. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. I think that's a really nice image for the moment. And for people that are coming a bit later, I'm talking about the Forgotten Dwarf Compact Cherry Tomato. Now, this is an amazing little plant that can produce a lot of food for you in a very small space. It doesn't take a lot of costs. You need small containers. You don't need a lot of fertilizers and liquids and things like that. Obviously, a bigger plant, you're gonna get a bigger output, but it's still a good way to produce food on your windowsill, at the end of season, at the beginning of season, and you can grow them in a little bottle like this, using it as a greenhouse to get them started early. Just make sure you've got good airflow, so uh, no mold things. Or you can create a big one of these uh, so this is a vertical bottle garden where you've got holes in the side. So I was showing this last night in my video. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, you need to go back and check that out because it shows you how to build one of these on a website. So there's a hole there and there's water catchment down below, drips out of these. And you could actually grow bigger ones of these with uh, probably two litre bottles and stack them up a couple high and you could have them pouring out the side like that. To me, that's a better vertical garden system than the upside down uh, bucket. But my overall choice is that this one, either laying on its side, holes in the side, open the lid, pull the lid back, close the lid if you wanna keep it warmer, or have it that way, growing like that, holes right around the side, and just flipping the lid out. You can cut that edge off eventually, and make sure you've got a good airflow for tomatoes there. And yeah, that's my would be my preferred way. And I'm probably gonna do it like that. I'm gonna look for my um, my Roma cherry tomatoes, and I've, I've got some seed lying around, and I've got some of the Thai pinks, but I think the Thai pinks got a bigger root system, and they may grow in that, be worth a trial, possibly. Uh, here we go, Deborah says she's learning heaps today. Well, thank you so much, Deb. Um, Hopefully we're adding lots of value to people's lives and uh, they're getting a chance to learn. If you, um, there are links down in the description for options to learn the Starting a Worm Farm, a Beginner's Guide. There's uh, the ebook there. There's also um, the Worm Wranglers members area where you can support the channel and you can also be a member 
of the Facebook group to share images and things like that once you're a Worm Wrangler member. And also there's other links and things down there. And you can also leave Super Chats uh, if you want to support the channel another way. And there's a Buy Me A Coffee link where you can go and buy me a coffee. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they only take, um, buy me a coffee, they only take 5%, which is absolutely brilliant. And uh, that, a few people are members there as well. And then they can become Worm Wrangler members for the Facebook page and put content in there, put pictures in there, and I'll go in and comment and uh, try and help you as much as I can in there as well. And what we got here, all right, Jenny, I have become a tomato snob, can't buy grocery tomatoes anymore. Why not? Um, look, I only do when they're out of season and I can't grow them, and even then, I, I don't buy that many. So let's, uh, yeah, let's ask everyone, what's your favorite cherry tomato? Uh, mine is the tumbler, all the different varieties of those. I don't really have an actual uh, brand. I, my favourite one, if I was going to say this year, would be the Indigo Rose, which is bigger than a cherry tomato, and uh, the semi, semi-determinant semi tomato. And uh, that's my favourite. It's a black one, and it goes red slowly over time. And it's got a sort of in-between flavour of not really sweet or sour. It's just, for me, it's just right. It's very meaty tomato not too much seed and um, the skin's not too thick so that's my favorite one the indigo and I have been showing that on my channel uh, a bit and so, so I think the tomato the uh, homestead garden six months old if you haven't seen that video a tour of my garden my recent one I show that uh, some of my tomatoes in there and I show the indigo rose there Michael the best tomatoes I ever grew was when I Top dressed and raised the bed with rabbit manure. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Uh, thanks for sharing that. I've never done that myself, but um, good stuff, obviously. <laughs> it worked for you. Got to love that. I'm sure you do that again if you can. I love dwarf varieties because I live in a high altitude desert. There is 40 degree difference between night and day temps. I mainly look for short season tomatoes. Oh, yeah, see, that's solving your problem of what, how you can grow food. Uh, with that, yeah, with that altitude and um, obviously with uh, temperatures and things like that. So, yeah, that would be perfect. So if you're in a place like that where you've got a short window, a short growing season, um, these are also awesome, awesome for that. Uh, I would highly recommend that. I grow mine, as I said, at the end, beginning and end of the seasons, uh, these, these type of determinants. My favourite is the Prax Cherry. The Prax Cherry, that's interesting. So a lot of these names I don't know because there's a little confidence. And like I said, I don't follow all the names, things like that. But thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, I'm sure people got their... Oh, excuse me. So that was live. I'm sure people got their pens out and uh, writing these different varieties down. Let's keep going here. With high winds, dwarf tomatoes are a help. Yeah, because they, they don't blow over and you don't need stakes and all these things. Um, I, to be honest, if I was going to do a hobby, and I was, you know, I'd love to do that if I had the time to just grow uh, all the different types of dwarfs. Um, that would be absolutely f so much fun. You'll have to preserve some tomatoes, Marty. Yeah, this year hasn't been the best year for growing tomatoes because of La Nina. We get enough. Cara and I eat them all, and some friends might eat some. Um, and I've got some spare for seed, and then, you know, uh, some go to the chickens as well. So... Uh, I don't really have enough, but we are, like I said, the small ones that I got, the Tiny Tims, I just throw them straight into um, like a sambal, a Balinese stir fry, which is like a fried rice, a Balinese fried rice, and sometimes into, um, a, you know, a pesto pasta or something. Let's keep moving through. And again, I hopefully I haven't missed anything. The Urban Gardener, Prax is a delicious cherry tomato out by a fellow retired YouTuber, Raymond Browning. I think I recognise that name, Raymond Browning, Prax. And I recognise that Prax too, but things aren't clicking together. But thank you so much, Urban Gardener, for sharing that. I appreciate that. If anyone contacts me, I can get them seeds to them and you as well, Marty. Um, well, I'm in Australia, so I don't know uh, if that's possible. But, um, yeah. I think they can usually go to the About in YouTube and go to the About tab and then has an email in. So thank you very much uh, for offering that. It's really nice of you. Fee Energy or Fi Energy. Q Marty. All right, Q Marty. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> Question, hi Marty, can you recommend a website or a way of organising the planting schedule for a newbie veggie gardener on the Sunshine Coast? I get overwhelmed trying to figure out what to do and when. I'll show you this book here. Have a look at this, check this one out. This is good for all around Australia. Now Peter Gundell, he's old news. And like I said, we're pulling back a lot of the older stuff here and re-bringing it back because gardening is evergreen stuff, right? And so Peter Gundell was one of, was a presenter in on ABC, Gardening Australia, for many, many years. Lovely guy, and he's now retired from that. But he has some books out. And this one's called The Practical Australian Gardener. Now, I'm not, uh, there's no sponsorship or anything like this. I don't get any kickbacks or anything like this. But this is a book that goes right through the seasons uh, throughout Australia, and it's quite good. And if you can check it out, maybe you can go on to, somewhere where they're selling it and flip through some pages and see if it's it's right for you. Um, so other than that, I don't know of any websites other than Gardening Australia itself uh, that may help you um, with that one. I'd love to bring out something like that in the future if we have time on the website. If I ever get a team built up, we would definitely look at, at those type of things where we could talk about seasonal. And I have been thinking about actually producing a piece of content which is seasonal um, as well coming into the future but we need to sort of be a little bit careful where we're going I can't overextend myself but I totally get it what you're saying I'm getting overwhelmed trying to figure out what to do and when so I'm in a um, I'm in a subtropical climate right and it's quite similar to you right this very time and I'm growing at the moment I'm growing Kang Kong and I'm growing better leaf and I'm going to be growing um, Egyptian spinach, uh, tomatoes, uh, basil. I've got uh, rock melon in, things like that. So anything that grows in the full-on summer. And um, there's no, I think I mentioned Egyptian spinach. It's one that you don't see around very often. The Kang Kong is absolutely brilliant this time of year. And so you can look at those Asian greens as well. And I've got them in my on my webs in my channel. Uh, Kang Kong, spelled Kang, like instead of K King, Kang, and then Betel is B T L B E T L E, Betel leaf, and you make these wraps out of them, and they're a perennial. They grow like strawberries, and you can just keep them going every year. Brilliant plant, and so healthy for you. A uh, superfood and a forgotten plant. I've got um, a video in here. Uh, Betel leaf, B E T L E, leaf plant if you type that into marty's garden channel it'll come up there's a few videos there and i am going to talk about that uh, in the future as well so i do bring out some plants here and there that i'm growing uh, not everything but some things i do share in the oh and don't forget chilies get all the chilies in now they're starting to get hot enough for them it's been cool summer but it's getting hot enough I do share in the USA, there are laws regarding sending seeds internationally. Yeah, Australia is really hard now. Um, there's heaps of laws and stuff around it. So got to be careful about pathogens and fungus that might be in the seed. Yeah, they treat everything. And I've had seeds try to be sent to me and uh, they don't turn up and things like that. Here we got one. Brett Turley, has anyone heard of Mr. Stripey Tomato? <laughs> I haven't. But um, yeah. Let us know. Has anyone heard about it? I've got the Tigerella growing, which is a striped one. A bit off topic. It says, what's the quickest way to use grass clippings to make soil? I don't have worms or anything. I'm looking at composting it all so that the biomass stays in the property. Is it worth it? 100% worth it. Get Just get it. Look for a cheap tumbler, a second-hand one in like Facebook Marketplace, or if you've got time, uh, you know, like a big upside, like big compost bin that touches the ground, the plastic ones, and you just turn it to a fork. It gets compacted quite easily because it's so fine, so you've got to turn it a bit more, but a tumbler, you just throw it in with a few scraps and things and just turn it. And uh, yeah, it makes, it's very high in nitrogen and minerals and things like that. And um, yeah, makes a good, makes a very good fertilizer over time. So, but you just got to turn it a lot. As I said, it gets compacted, it needs air into it. So you don't want it to become uh, anaerobic. Oh yes, forgot about plants coming into Oz. What else have we got here? I do share in the USA these laws regarding sending them internationally. Yep, that's right. 
do a list for seasonal on FB, Marty. Yeah, I could do that. Um, maybe plant, put more of the plants that we're doing in the Facebook members group. Uh, that's for the people that are members inside the Worm Wranglers community, such as in on the YouTube channel here, which has cost a minimum of about three bucks a month, which is just unreal to get hold of me and, and more information. We're just growing that. We've only got about 12 members in there. I think there's about 30 Worm Wranglers in um, on the channel and then there's about another 20 or something in the other page so the buy me a coffee page so it's still growing it's still going and it's something that we're working on and trialing at the moment but that's a pretty good idea possibly putting uh lists and things of what you can grow uh into the facebook group there or people can go in and ask me a question what they're growing and i can go in there and do that because it's a bit hard here in um in youtube in my community here they don't have those options uh, let's keep going here. Mr. Stripey is another name for Tigerella. It's cool they got all these different names for him. I, you know, we get a bit overwhelmed with all the Latin names and stuff like that, unless you're like a botanist or you're really hardcore into what you're doing, or you know your job is you know you work in a nursery and um, you need to know all your different Latin ones. Okay, so if you've got any more questions please feel free to put them through. We generally run for about an hour here. We've been talking about the long forgotten dwarf cherry tomato. Are you gonna try growing them? Are you thinking about having a go? Did you pick up some cool varieties here from the other people that were sharing in the content? I'd like to know your thoughts. And if you've been watching it right through on the rerun, also leave a comments box down below and let me know if you're thinking about growing them and your thoughts on it. Let's have a quick chat about that before we leave here in the comments box. I would love to hear. Are you going to do it maybe in a recycled container like we've been talking about? I would love to hear that. Or would you like to see me do it uh, as well? That would be really cool to know. We'll wait for a few of those to pull up. I will have a quick drink of water. Slowly losing my voice now. I've been talking for about an hour. And we've got 18 people watching. Not sure of the thumbs up numbers, but we need to have above 22, I think was the highest number we had before. So if you can, give us a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already, because I'm producing content quite a lot, and we've got a great community here. I would love to see you come back, make friends with, my, with the community here, make friends with me, and I'm all about growing people and helping people grow amazing food and grow themselves into wonderful, wonderful people, <laughs> if that makes any sense. You know, uh, I've just been speaking with Pepe Fassos this morning and uh, my favorite uh, farmer friend, and uh, he's got 560 farms. And I was speaking to him about it this morning about, you know, like uh, growing people. And, um, and it, was it was great. We had a really great conversation about it. And he's got, um, he delivers, so his farm, or everything goes out to the local farmer's markets. There's lots of them around here. And I'm going to go and he's got a new, someone new started that's selling it from the markets. Having a few little hiccups, a few little problems. So I'm going to go there um, probably the next weekend. I think we've got uh, Daniel, the chicken tractor man, coming this Saturday. He's penciled in. If he's not penciled in, I'm going to the markets to help uh, this woman and give some training for sales and things like that for his microgreens and herbs and stuff that he sells out of the markets there. If not, I'm going the weekend after. So if I'm not around on a Saturday, we'll have the live show on Saturday night and uh, I'm going to go and help help out uh, Peppy's new trainee uh, just to teach you how to work with sales and work with people, love people. And uh, yeah, it's all about the experience, right? Here we go. Absolutely going to grow in the bottles. Well, let me know how you go. Try some, maybe if you can get a hold of some secondhand hanging baskets and do a comparison maybe if you've got time but uh yeah go for the go for this one i reckon in the beginning stages bigger one more compost less chance of drying out quicker and um you're in being where you are deb you wouldn't need to do uh the enclosed one but in winter uh, you might you just keep it open so maybe do that one like that long way to create the holes get more get as much soil as you can in the top Keep as much wall as you can and just take that top part off there. That would do really well, I believe, at your place there, Deb. If anyone else is going to grow in bottles and things like that, let me know. And um, 
I've got something else just to mention before we go, a little ritual that we do when we're closing up the show. The Dwarf Tomato Project website is cool. They show what's available in the Southern and Northern Hemisphere. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, the Dwarf Tomato Project. So you might want to write that down, guys, if you want to keep looking into that further. This is one of the beautiful things about this community and, uh, you know, these daily live shows is this stuff you just don't pick up in the video production, right? We're not getting um, the same experience. We're not getting, you're not getting the connections and people like that just pop in that are passionate about certain subjects, sharing their valuable knowledge for that period of anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. It's just priceless as far as I'm concerned. And I, I love learning in here too. It's just brilliant. And uh, people have been returning quite often to watch the videos that I've been putting out and returning to the live shows. So I want to thank you at the bottom of my heart for that. I'm going to pull this off now and we'll get ready to um, to leave shortly. But I just want to thank you at the bottom of my heart for that. Now, please, we do say goodbye to each other towards the end. So I'm going to put some music on, say goodbye to each other in the chat, send across your goodbyes to me as well uh, in the chat, and um, we will keep uh, moving forward to finish up the show before I lose my voice. One last comment from Kieran, and then uh, we'll keep rolling forward. I'll just bring them out with the music uh, as they roll out. So remember, say goodbye to the crew in here, your friends and all the new people that you're meeting, and say goodbye to me, and we'll play some tunes out and roll it out. I like the bottle idea for strawberries, way better than tomato. Tommy Artos. I've been forcing myself to have one thin slice on my Sangers because what you said about the skin thing. <laughs> Look, mate, if you don't like them, just don't eat them. You're not gonna, you're not gonna die if you don't eat tomatoes. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's roll out the music, and uh, I've got, I think a bit of chill, relax music would be pretty good. While you start saying goodbye to each other, and we'll see. We'll be here again tomorrow, same time, 9:30 Sydney Australia time, and. Uh, Let's roll out some tunes. Bit of chill music. This is what some of the things they provide me inside this software. I still can't put my own music in here yet. I've got to get them to do that. They change the music in here all the time. I don't know why they do that. This is the different chill music to last night. Let's see what else we got here. Let's go lounge music. While well, they're saying goodbye, everyone. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> this is the middle of a time when I like to have a bit of a crazy time, a bit of fun, DJ Marty, with the terrible outro music. <laughs> Please say goodbye to me and everyone else in here. Hang on, I'll keep I'm, I'm missing a few here. We'll run through. I love the chat. Chat's great. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that before. I said to Pepe, I'm not going to film if I go there, though. I'm just going to help him uh, get his sales right and uh, help training the young lady. But who knows? We may do some market stuff in the future. Uh, it's definitely on my mind. We'll keep that in mind. Don't know about that lounge music, but anyway, 
been a great show. Thank you so much for coming and supporting my channel. It's really appreciated. We've got another video coming out uh, tomorrow and also uh, another live show. I've got to do some research on what it's going to be because I want to find things that can help people grow food fast, easily at home to really help solve this problem of, you know, the costs of inflation and food inflation, things like that just so we can really start saving some money and really help people. You know, as I said, it's not just about growing plants here, it's also about growing people. And uh, I would like to do a challenge at some stage, just we've got them all around the globe. So it really needs some good thinking about the different seasons and stuff with a challenge. But uh, we could do, someone mentioned a challenge on it on one side of the country for one type of plant and then another or we could do a challenge in australia and then the challenge slowly moves into say america into the next season the same challenge and people could watch it and learn for it before they go through and share their mistakes so that's a, a concept that could be put together um, as well so so i'm sorry i've made a doubled up a couple of these on here but yeah god bless you all Thank you so much for coming to the show. I truly appreciate you. My love goes out to all of you. Thank you, Deb, for coming and moderate, moderating in the show and helping me out in the Worm Wranglers members area. Remember, there are links down below uh, in the comments, not in the comments, but in the description where you can help out, support the channel, have access to courses, things like that. And yeah, and really help this uh, coming along because we're getting some good growth in the last 10 days. So Marty's Gardens, looks like it's gonna be safe. I was getting a bit worried there for a while there that, um, we weren't going to be able to be sustainable. But anyway, I'll keep on rolling. You have an awesome day, and uh, we'll see you at tomorrow's live show and video. Bye for now.